Distinguished guests, please take your seats and silence your electronic devices. The commencement ceremony will begin momentarily. Distinguished guests, the class of 2022.
Please be seated. Nine colleges, two campuses come together to share joy and gratitude for the class of 2022. President Farias Eisner, an interim Provost Crone. This has been a difficult two years, but within and coming out of this negative experience is a very positive. This, this class, amongst all of our colleges, watched healthcare change over the last three to five years, and now they're becoming part of the change and, and will be part of uh, shaping where healthcare goes in the future. They embody communication transparency, trust, integrity, character, and all of that is wrapped into humanism and empathy. One of the beautiful things about Western U is all of the colleges have always stood together shoulder to shoulder. It's a common theme that runs through our students and through the university. We already stood by each other from discipline to discipline, from college to college. I think that's always been one of the very special things about Western U and our Western U community and our Western U family. Hey, hey, hey. making signs of the class of 2022. Oh, great. What's the theme? Jump in, you'll figure it out. Dean Satterfield, the College of Podiatric Medicine. You can't put off uh, until tomorrow what you really want, or you'll be on the other end of, of 20 or 30 years saying, gee, I wish I should, I, and I should have done X. Don't let there be X's in your life. Don't give up on your life's goals and plans, uh, or else medicine will just eat you alive, and you want to retain who you are. Dean Nelson, the College of Veterinary Medicine. And we're in total admiration that they made it through challenges that no other class has ever had to make it through. Our challenge now is to recapture that culture as alumni, and, and we're looking forward to that. Never back up. Remember that you are tomorrow's leaders. Live up to that expectation. the College of Graduate Nursing. The class of 2022 is one of the most adaptable classes that I've seen so far. This class has witnessed some of the most remarkable healthcare challenges of any class that I've seen in years. Some of the challenges that they've had are to take care of some of the sickest patients we've had in decades. And they've done it with grace, with style, and with competence. Our big thing is teamness and connectiveness. I think that the class of 2022 really learned how important each class member is to each other. Dean Prabhu, the College of Pharmacy. And a class of 20 and 2020 and class 2021, sadly, did not walk across the stage to pick their diploma up, so I'm very grateful that we are in that situation where we can actually see them face to face and give them their highest honor. Suddenly from the sidelines, uh, um, my student pops up and he's getting ready to administer the shot uh, to me. And I was overjoyed to see that. I'm excited for the class of 2022 because they are going out into the world as competent healthcare professionals representing Western U. They made it. Dean Friedrichsen, 
the College of Dental Medicine. The class of 2022 has exhibited amazing resilience and patience as they've gone through the entire clinical education during the pandemic. Usually we like things fairly regimented and consistent from patient to patient, from procedure to procedure. And we learned that, you know, as far as the protocols and how we approach things, we had to be flexible in order to be able to continue to provide the patient care that we wanted to. Forward together. Thank them for their resilience and for their patience. the Graduate College of Biomedical Sciences. It's easy to slip into a mindset that I call the imposter syndrome. This idea that great things, exciting futures are for somebody else. And the reality is that um, you've already demonstrated that you belong. You've already demonstrated that you have a future these students have shown that you cannot easily extinguish a fighting spirit. As long as that spirit continues to endure, um, I think that we have a lot to look forward to in society if, if, if we have more people out there uh, like the class of 2022. This class has shown great heart and great perseverance, uh, and I'm, I couldn't be happier for all of them. Dean Conant, the College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific and Comp Northwest. Time is the most valuable asset that you can have, and that what you need to understand that even though you'll be working extremely hard, long hours in residency, you need to start making time for yourself, for your family, and your friends. You'll be spending many long hours treating patients, saving lives, in the next three to five years of your training. Your time must be split between work and have a great work-life balance. This class, because of what they've had to endure, are going to be much stronger and able to adapt in the future for any adversity that is brought before them. Dean Schilling. The College of Health Sciences. The, the class 22, their futures are so bright. They've learned how to pivot. They've learned how to be innovative. And they are prepared for whatever medicine um, or disease presents. And they have the skill set by which to attack that with veracity, hope, and knowledge. I am thankful to this class for making every one of us better educators, making us better humans, and making us better as a profession for what they have brought out in all of us, what they have asked of us, and what they have shown us has helped all of us grow every day. I would leave this class with the three things that I asked them to capture when they came, and that is to remain resilient, to remain reflective, and to remain resourceful. And above all, always remain humble. We are here to serve. Dean Hoppy, the College of Optometry. Class of 2022, you helped us learn. You helped us imagine a new way of delivering the highest quality of education. And I wanna thank you for your participation as an equal partner in getting through this challenging time together. The class of 2022 has an amazingly bright future. They have the best of the high tech world, the high touch world, and the Western New core values behind them for science, caring, and humanism. I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sticking with us, being our partners in navigating this time together to make sure that you've achieved your personal and professional dreams. Thank you.
what they've accomplished is unprecedented. And these letters reflect and embody the commitment that they have to the university, to their patients, to their families, to their careers, to their future. And we are honored to be a part of it. President Farias Eisner, this is our letter. Yes. For me, E stands for everyone matters. I love that. And the empathy which they themselves embody. To the future. To the future and Godspeed. We invite our guests to please rise now to meet the people who have helped to guide your loved one through their journey through Western U. The faculty, administration, board of trustees, deans, provost, and president.
Distinguished guests, the president of Western University of Health Sciences, Dr. Robin Farias Eisner. For those who are able, please remain standing for our national anthem and the invocation that follows. Here to sing the national anthem is vocalist Amanda Sutton Gray. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Leading us today in the invocation is Dr. Y.L. Kamas, professor in the College of Veterinary Medicine. What a day. Good morning, all. It's an honor and a privilege to be among all of you to celebrate the graduation of the class of 2022. Graduates, join me in a prayer to God the Almighty, Allah, our Heavenly Father, Jehovah, or to the deity entity you worship. Dear God, we are praying to you to give the DVM class of 2022 strength, endurance, and perseverance to face the new challenges they will be encountering after graduation. We thank you for everything you gave them when they passed through the four years of Western U CVM curriculum. We ask you that graduates never forget their parents, significant others, friends, colleagues, faculty, and staff who supported them throughout their education. As health professionals, may they always try their best to alleviate pain from animals. As veterinarians, they will be dealing with animals that cannot tell what hurts. Almighty God, let the graduates be paid twice, once through their employer and once again from you for making these animals they treat and their owners happy. Please remind them that they will be doing a heroic job while working to help abandoned, neglected, abused, badly treated animals and protect people from zoonotic diseases. We ask that the superpower, God, give you health, happiness, and wealth in the many years to come in your service and practice in this noble veterinary medicine profession. God, you gave them the strength to pass successfully through all the hurdles during their studies. 
please shower the class of 2022 with blessing according to their kind and big hearts. God, please give the DVM class of 2022 continued strength and fill their hearts with love to all people and animals throughout their careers and beyond. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Distinguished guests, the chair of the Board of Trustees of Western University of Health Sciences, Ms. Elizabeth Zamora. Thank you to Amanda Sutton Gray and to Dr. Kamas for that wonderful opening to our ceremony today. It is my honor and pleasure to be with you today and represent the Western U Board of Trustees. Welcome to my fellow board members, Western U administrators, graduates, families, faculty, staff, and distinguished guests. Today is your day, and you should all feel so proud that together we are sending these prepared healthcare providers into the world to do their best work yet. Each Western U class has a fascinating group personality of its own. Here's a snapshot of this year's graduating class. Of the 104 graduates, there are 74 women and 30 men. The, young, <laughs> the youngest is age 23 and the oldest is age 38. They come from 19 California counties, 15 US states, and two countries. When our graduates have all received their diplomas, the total number of Western U alumni from all programs will be 19,714. It is a proud day indeed. And now let me offer some words of inspiration to our graduates. Today you receive your degrees after dedicating years to your studies. As you celebrate, consider this day to be a significant reflection point a time to appreciate your past years of demanding work that brought you to this day of accomplishment. And as you look to the past, so you will look to the future. Graduation represents the end of your studies. Commencement is the beginning of something new. So today we celebrate your educational achievement and we celebrate your commencement as you begin the important work of the rest of your lives. I hope you take with you the foundational elements of your Western U education. Foundational elements such as compassion, caring, and empathy. You are Western U graduates destined to provide transformative health care and create healthy communities wherever life takes you. Congratulations. And now I would like to introduce you, I would like to introduce Western U's president, Dr. Robin Farias Eisner. The Western U Board of Trustees appointed Dr. Farias Eisner as Western U's third president, effective March 1st of this year. He came to us from Creighton University, where he was director of the Henry Lynch Comprehensive Cancer Research Center and chief academic officer in the School of Medicine. He was also Dean of Women's Health and Professor and Chairman of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Creighton School of Medicine. Prior to his appointment at Creighton, Dr. Farias Eisner was recruited to the University of Illinois Emergency Medicine Residency Training Program with a focus on surgical critical care. Recognizing his love for education, the University of Illinois offered him a faculty position to train future resident physicians. UCLA recognized Dr. Farias Eisner's unique clinical skills in critical care medicine and recruited him to continue training in the greatly needed area of women's health. In 1990, Dr. Farias Eisner completed residency training in obstetrics and gynecology at UCLA, and in 1992, he completed a fellowship in surgical oncology for women, also at UCLA. 
Dr. Farias Eisner then spent the next 30 years working in leadership positions at UCLA to improve the health of women through the establishment of successful delivery models for high-quality patient care and high-level cancer research. Over the past decade, he has served as the principal investigator for a highly impactful NIH grant to eliminate healthcare disparities in cancer cohorts in underserved populations in Los Angeles. President Farias Eisner has a decorated academic pedigree that includes a Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry from UCLA, a medical doctorate degree from the Royal College of Surgeons in Dublin, Ireland, a PhD in Molecular Biology from the Molecular Biology Institute at UCLA, and an MBA from Pepperdine University. He is board certified in emergency medicine, obstetrics and gynecology, and gynecologic oncology. Dr. Farias Eisner is Professor Emeritus at the University of California and Professor at Creighton University School of Medicine. President and Mrs. Farias Eisner have a home in Pomona and a home in Calabasas. At their family home in Calabasas, they raised five children, and they now have three grandchildren, one who has just joined us on April 25th. Dr. Farias Eisner takes the lead at a transformative time in healthcare and a transformational time at Western U. Please give a warm welcome to President Robin Farias Eisner. Thank you, Chair Zamora. To members of the class of 2022, faculty, honored guests, trustees, administration alumni, family and friends, loved ones, welcome to the 41st annual commencement exercises for Western University of Health Sciences, and congratulations to the class of 2022. I am absolutely thrilled and honored to be with you today in person. And I repeat, in person, what a treat. This year's commencement theme is gratitude, as you have noted. I would like to take a moment to express appreciation for those who make this wonderful event possible. Notably, the remarkable work of our university commencement committee under the leadership of Dr. Beverly Guidry senior vice president of university student affairs. The support of Dr. Torio Thomas and her exceptional special events team. The departments of informational technology, facilities, communications, public affairs, and the campus bookstore. Special mention is due to Greg Christie and the excellent production crew at Bright Ideas. Thank you for making this extraordinary event happen. Please join me in a sincere thank you to them. It is humbling and an honor and a pleasure and a privilege for me to participate for the first time in these coveted commencement exercises at this university. Servant leadership is my philosophy. As your new president, my focus has been to effectively serve the constituents of our five branches of university government, our esteemed student body, faculty, staff, deans, administrators, and our board of trustees. Equally important is to serve and engage with our communities, our vibrant communities in Pomona and Lebanon. The first day as university president was March 1st of this year, and I am so grateful to you, the students, faculty, deans, staff, administrators, and board of trustees for the extraordinary progress that we have already made together in such a short time. Thank you. As you launch your exciting new careers, we will continue to honor you in the way that we can. We will launch a successful com comprehensive capital campaign. We will build upon the generous Hetherington Foundation donation of 150 acres of land in Lebanon, Oregon, coupled with the foundation anchoring $22.5 million. We will turn our focus to create revenue diversity, independence from student tuition, we will set our sights on the establishment of scholarships and lowering tuitions. 
We will create educational opportunities for our underserved communities. We will also expand our university educational infrastructure. We will create new partnerships with community leaders and legislators. We will design an innovative plan to grow and expand our campus in Pomona and Lebanon. I am absolutely delighted to celebrate with you today. As new graduates, you recognize the critical global need for a uniquely trained healthcare provider, you, who possesses a coveted and unique humanistic and compassionate skill set. You embody those ethos. You are our new ambassadors. The success of delivering the right product, the right skills at the right place at the right time for the first time and every time is what drives large career successes. As new ambassadors, the global community is ready for your skills. This is your time. While writing my thesis for my executive MBA program, I was impressed with an intriguing educational model described in the Harvard Business Review publication called The Goldilocks Effect, which aptly characterizes your career opportunities because of your truly unique training. And let me share just a few sound bites with you. The Goldilocks principle or effect is named by analogy to the children's story The Three Bears, in which a young girl named Goldilocks tastes porridge that is neither too hot nor too cold, but is just right, just perfect. This concept can be applied to you. This is just the right time to enter the healthcare global community with just the right skill set, humanism, compassion, the individual patient, inclusivity of the whole body, mind, and spirit. And that is what you offer. You bring a model of value-based, patient-centered, and individual-specific high-quality care to your future patients. Your graduate from a young and yet very special university with a unique history. Please consider another analogy. Of the most glorious oak trees that begin its life as a single acorn, the mighty oak is Western University of Health Sciences and the acorn was a single osteopathic medical college with only a few students and faculty and staff. The founding college has grown into the most comprehensive graduate health sciences university globally, with nine distinguished colleges that together individually are unmatched and unparalleled, in my opinion. There's no other graduate health sciences university that could rival our unique model of colleges. However, we must grow and expand our infrastructure in order to keep pace with our growing educational demands and opportunities. Only, only 40 years ago, 31 graduates representing the inaugural class of the College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific received their diplomas from this institution. In contrast, when our 2022 commitment, commencement exercises for all our colleges conclude, Western University will have awarded 1,071 degrees approximately 35 times the number in the charter class. Extraordinary growth in the number of graduates and in the size of the educational enterprise. You know the feeling of satisfaction that comes from the completion of a critically impactful endeavor. Finally, it's done. I did it. All the hard work paid off. Even more important, imagine graduating with a coveted degree in a health science such as this. I have earned my diploma even more exciting. This is the beginning of your career and a new exhilarating chapter in your lives. And countless more exciting chapters surely are yet to be written in your book of life and in your career. You now are uniquely trained and highly technically proficient health professionals and humanistic and compassionate healers, true ambassadors of the coveted ethos and brand of Western U. It is your skill set that is needed in our global community. You are also lifelong learners and ambassadors and forever will be 
leaders and embracers of new experiences. That is why today is called commencement rather than conclusion. You are poised now for a new start. You are a beacon of promise. Your new journey beckons, one full of new challenges, new relationships, new locations to explore, and new opportunities abound. You are blessed, in my view, to have been equipped with these extraordinary tools for the new exciting journey. And congratulations for that, and congratulations to you. Let's show some love for these incredible graduates. Congratulations. Please permit me to also credit some of the other constituents that have made this possible. Our excellent faculty at Western U, all of whom have walked paths very similar to yours. As we celebrate you, our esteemed graduates, so too should we celebrate our faculty, our deans, our leaders, our stakeholders, our board of trustees, for nowhere is there a group more dedicated, I can assure you, to your academic and professional success. We are all in this together, one team united behind a common mission. These mentors and teachers have invested themselves in you not only to ensure that you are technically superb and expert, which you are, but also to prepare you to embody the art of humanism and compassion, equity, as you lead by example and you soar into your successful new chapter. High grades and scores are great achievements. We know that. But far more important to all of us is the greatest accomplishment of all, your coveted and special identity, your humanistic values, your character, your patience, compassion, collegiality, forthrightness. They're all so critically important, just as is your clinical know-how and technological mastery. It is the combination of these qualities, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, the superb technical skill coupled with humanism and character that defines your special skill set and defines our mission. Our faculty have lived this mission through all of their interactions with you in classroom, clinical setting, but most of all through the examples they set as highly capable humanistic and compassionate healthcare professionals. I ask that you join me in acknowledging and honoring the excellence of our extraordinary faculty as they stand to be recognized. Faculty, kindly stand so we can all recognize you. Thank you. An example of important and compelling skill set and how it impacts is a personal story that I have. Rosie the orangutan is a well-known figure among elementary schools at the LA Zoo. A charming orangutan indeed. And a very popular one. And poor Rosie had right lower quadrant abdominal pain and she was curled up in her habitat and was not responding to antibiotics, was not eating, she was anorexic, she was not a happy camper. She was septic and she was dying. They called UCLA and, and asked that my team would, or that I would come and evaluate her, which I did with my team. And we couldn't get close to her, understandably, she was distraught. So, the decision was put her under some form of anesthesia. So I brought my anesthesia team, called them and said, get, please get here. And we evaluated her and she had a very large right lower quadrant pelvic mass. So I de we decided to operate. And admittedly, the anatomy was a little different. Uh, a lot more brown fat and, and as you well know, the anatomy more than I, you're the experts. I'm a homo sapien surgeon, and you have the expertise that I do not have. 
But I kind of figured that because the cecum was sort of funneled, I noted that the appendix, they did bring me a comparative anatomy book, admittedly. I noted that the appendix looked like a zucchini. I'm Italian, so I think of things in those terms. And the zucchini was this appendix, this horrific appendix that had ruptured. So obviously she had a perineal cavity full of, it was purulent. So the decision was to do an appendectomy and then to irrigate. As you know, the solution to pollution is dilution. So I irrigated copiously. And the next day, she was very happy running around. We did close with absorbable sutures, no staples. Thank you for that. But the point is that she responded to the kindness and to the compassion. Her mother, also at the zoo, was visibly distraught. And time was taken to soothe her mother as well. And believe it or not, I'm convinced that when I went back to do my post-op rounds, she recognized me. I might have been imagining things, but we had a connection. And so your skill set is needed because we're all creatures of God. And we all need your humanistic touch and your compassion and caring. The communication, as you know, is unbelievable between animals and humans. My Yorkie, Guido, Guido in Latin means the large one. He, it, he, admittedly, he's only five pounds. Now, my wife, Terry, told me very clearly that Guido communicates better than you do. <laughs> and, and you know, I agree with her. But that's my point, is that your skill set is coveted. And it is very special, and you must know that. And you must never lose your identity. We also have a special group of unsung heroes among us that rarely, if ever, are recognized. This distinguished group of individuals work selflessly and tirelessly to shepherd the university. They spend hours and hours, and we don't even see it. And so I would like to recognize them today and ask that our esteemed board of trustees please stand and be recognized. We want to thank you for what you do and have done for us. Thank you. Please permit me also to recognize your dean, who has invested many years and years of service for you and for the education and for your quality of education. Dean Nelson, please rise. <laughs> Class of 22, what an amazing journey this has been for you. In what were seemingly insurmountable obstacles, you have prevailed, beginning with the pandemic that kept most of you in class at home for the better part of two years, your clinical skill courses, and the business of daily living, an endless sequence of challenges, as you know. But you persevered. Now, you will not only have a diploma, but a great story to tell. Where was I when the great pandemic hit? Well studying to be a health science professional. Sufficient superlatives do not exist to adequately describe all of you for achieving the impossible, for reaching this point against all odds. You made it, kudos, and what a relief. Please join me in warmly congratulating our extraordinary graduates this morning. Congratulations. In preparation for the remainder of our exciting ceremony, I wish to briefly describe the current commencement process. Nine colleges are presenting graduates this year, including this one. The College of Podiatric Medicine, the College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific, the Graduate College of Biomedical Sciences, the College of Health Sciences held their ceremonies here Wednesday. It was amazing. The College of Dental Medicine, the College of Pharmacy, the College of Graduate Nursing, and the College of Optometry held theirs here yesterday. Also extraordinary day. Comp Northwest will hold their ceremony in Lebanon, Oregon on May 27th, and so we'll all be heading up there. In addition, an, ad an important tradition is the presentation of a university lapel pin to each graduate. 
This lapel pin that's placed on your lapel, is a, it will be placed and presented to you by our alumni representative, Catherine Slaughter Mafad, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, Class of 2017. The pin is offered as a gift of the newest members of our alumni family and bears the university seal and the degree that, the, that you, the graduate, have earned. We hope you will wear the pin often and with pride as new ambassadors for Western U and for the health profession in general. So please, congratulations. I give you, ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2022. Godspeed. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you, President Farias Eisner and Chair Zamora and members of our Board of Trustees. And thank you, Dean Nelson and all of our faculty and staff. This is such a special day of celebration for our graduates and a time of appreciation for all of our Western U community. My heartfelt welcome to all in our audience. I recall vividly my own graduation day, and someday I hope your memories will be as fond as mine are of mine. I never fail to feel hopeful and proud as I watch our graduates receive their diplomas each year. This year, it is even more personal. We have all been through a lot together since you first started at Western U. You've gone through four years of vet med unlike any other cohort of student in history, and you made it to this finish line. Congratulations. Together, you and your faculty have tackled tough social issues and worked, through true worked for true global change. Your generation has already changed the fundamental nature of our workplaces and our educational processes, and you will continue to do so. You are shaping the future. Take good care and shape it well. As you graduate today and celebrate this proud milestone, you prepare to enter the front lines of a battle against diseases of all kinds, and you will often be on the leading edge of them. There will be new frontiers of science and knowledge for you to discover and learn from, new challenges to face and obstacles to overcome. In this world filled with division and wounds, you have the opportunity to serve and to heal. Indeed, it is one of your callings as a Western U graduate as you move forward and take your place in healthcare. Know that as you do so, we are very proud of you and we have great confidence in you. Also know you will always have a place in our hearts and a home at Western U. You are entering a profession where you get to make an impact one moment at a time, one patient at a time, one community at a time. You traversed those long days of study as you conquered each rite of passage. You learned how to drink from that proverbial fire hose as you navigated through all your courses and the layers of learning interwoven through them. Without realizing it, you were no longer the college student with a college student's mentality. You became part of something bigger as you began to pat down the path of your serious and your very noble profession, where everything you learn, everything you do, has future implications. Graduates, we have all been humbled frequently as we have watched you learn and grow, gain confidence, find your voices, and work so hard to get to where you are today. As you do your own reflection, remember those very special individuals who helped you along the way, those that never gave up on you, who taught you those unforgettable hard-learned lessons, those that pushed you and believed in you. Treasure them and thank them. Never stop learning and never forget that you have the ability to make a difference. And never stop caring, nor stop trying to make your corner of the world a better place. Keep honing your expertise, your knowledge, and your skills, and never lose your humanity, your compassion, and your ability to care. This world has never needed you more. I wish for all of you to be courageous, 
to be leaders in your communities and always the champions of your patients, to be healers and to seek wellness, not just treat disease, to be proud of your profession, to be proud of who you are, where you come from, and where you are going, to not only stand on the shoulders of the giants that came before you, but to become the giant yourself so that others may stand upon your shoulders. Always strive for excellence and always keep your standards set high. Your patients will count on that from you. Your Western education, your Western U education will serve you well. Never forget to care for your patients with purpose, passion, and skill, to use your head, hands, and your heart to listen and to care. And always remember, the end of every action, every thought, every deed, there's your patience. Congratulations, class of 2022. Let's give them another very warm round of applause. We are proud of you. To President Fries Eisner, members of the Board of Trustees, members of the platform, and the guests, it is my honor to introduce Dr. Michael Blackwell as our keynote speaker. A career of public service is what exemplifies Dr. Michael Blackwell. Like his father, he earned a Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree from Tuskegee University. He also earned a Master of Public Health degree from Loma Linda University. Dr. Blackwell currently serves as the Director of the Program for Pet Health Equity, College of Social Work at the University of Tennessee. His mission is to improve access to veterinary care, especially for families with limited means. He also chairs the Access to Veterinary Care Coalition. Previously, Dr. Blackwell served as Dean of the College of Veterinary Medicine, University of Tennessee, Chief of Staff, Office of the Surgeon General of the U.S., Department Director of the Center for Veterinary Medicine, Food and Drug Administration, and Chief Veterinary Officer of the U.S. Public Health Service and the Humane Society of the United States. He achieved the rank of Assistant Surgeon General of U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps during 23 years on active duty. In addition, he has owned two private practices. Dr. Blackwell has received numerous awards and recognitions, most notably the Distinguished Service Medal, which is the highest personal honor award of the U.S. Public Health Service he was twice awarded the Surgeon General's Exemplary Service Medal, and he currently serves as a member of the HSVMA Board of Directors. Without any further ado, please welcome Dr. Michael Blackwell. Thank you, Dean Nelson. I am so excited that you guys are joining us today in this great profession. In fact, today you will be taking the veterinarian's oath. And I draw your attention to this phrase in that first sentence of our oath. It says that you're going to use your scientific knowledge and skills for the benefit of society. Boy, that seems pretty straightforward, doesn't it? Let's talk a little bit more about how we benefit society. But first, let's talk about what do we mean by society? Well, we could talk a lot about what characterizes this country's society, and I'm going to be more U.S.-centric in my comments. I apologize for those who represent other nations, but a lot of what I have to say will apply to your nation as well. Our society is struggling. We Americans need to be clear about that. 
we certainly need our most intelligent members to be clearer about that. And I know that means veterinarians. You will take your place among, amongst other colleagues who every day go out to benefit our society. But you'll also encounter this reality. Right now, more than one out of four families struggle to get veterinary care. It is understood that that's primarily because of limited financial resources. And yet they deserve companionship with a non-human. It's no longer acceptable to say out loud even, but certainly even quietly in my mind, that if you can't afford a veterinarian, you should not have the right to that relationship. No, they have a right to that relationship. What they need is for us to work hard to make sure that they can receive medical care for the humans and the non-humans in that family. We need a paradigm shift. And I think it's this generation of veterinarians who will bring that about. You see, about 70% of households in America have pets. 70%. And just for reference, less than 40% have children. We are what we call a bonded family society, human-animal bond. That's what makes up those family units, a human and non-human member. 70%, and most of those families consider their pets family members. So for those of you who will be entering clinical practice, and I'm going to talk a little bit about both companion animals and uh, livestock, but those of you who are entering into companion animal medicine, please understand you're in the business of providing family health care. Just as much as that pediatrician is taking, for, taking care of the minors in that family, you're taking care of the non-human members. Now, why is this paradigm shift and this mindset so important? Because if we're not careful, we will disrespect families. We will disrespect someone they love simply because we call them an animal. They're more than an animal. Let's get that straight. They're a loved one. What does that mean about how we communicate with those folks? It's more than uh, a loving relationship. You see, our role is to protect human health from diseases that can affect them originating in the animal world. If we want an example, we just look around us at COVID-19. In fact, you've learned this along the way, but for your family and loved ones, 65% of infectious diseases that I can get as a human are zoonotic. That agent is found in some animal species that can be transmitted to me under natural conditions. This is at the heart of our role in safeguarding society, in benefiting society. There's nobody else doing that job. That falls upon us. For those who are entering livestock medicine, food animal medicine, the same applies. Because we see a cow as a cow, but actually a cow is unprocessed food. And understanding that your role is safeguarding our food supply. Whatever you're doing, that's the ultimate outcome. Can you imagine this world without you? Can, can just think for a moment what our state of health and well-being would be without you? That's the high calling that you've received and answered. Now, not all are blessed as you are. I call you privileged. I'm privileged, and I'm the minority saying it. It's a privilege to be a veterinarian because we all know not everyone has the innate talent, skills, capability to earn that degree. And you've probably heard repeatedly that, well, one thing about the DVM degree is you can do lots of different things. I'm into my fifth career, so yeah, you, you can have different career paths. But what I really want to draw your attention to is the person who can earn the degree. What makes you up? 
you know, you, you have intellect. I like to think of you as an intelligent, compassionate problem solver. And you know what? Nowhere in that oath did it say that you've got to limit that talent to your patient. Those of you who will pursue public health, your patient is our society. It's our population. But we're saying for those in clinical practice, that's the ultimate outcome. Where would we be without you? Where would we be? Now, there's some work to be done. You see, we were doing just fine until we entered the 21st century. Now, not fine in all, by all measures, but I'm saying veterinary medicine is a profession. We had a thriving middle class post-World War II, large thriving middle class with discretionary funds. And yet, since 1970, we've seen a compression, a shrinkage of our middle class. Yet our service delivery model, the practices you will enter, by and large, are operating on a model out of the 20th century. We've got to change that. And you might say, well, I'm just a baby vet. I can't go out there and change anything. Uh, we get better by each generation. Some of you are going to solve some major problems. Others of you are going to prevent major problems. And we can go on and on and on. But that's your critical role in this society. Where would we be without you? Where would we be? Now, we can have fun while we take on such weighty issues, as I'm implying here. But that implies that we're choosing to be ourselves, first and foremost. I want you to think about this possibility. Uh, many of us decided we wanted to be a veterinarian as a six-year-old. Somewhere around six to eight years of age is where most of us were when, on average when we decided to be a veterinarian. You know, if, if that's happening that young, there's probably a veterinary gene somewhere that just hadn't been mapped. But you think about that. that. That stuck with you all of these years. This is why we say it's truly a calling. And so, privilege, being given the knowledge, the skills, the capability to go out and do great things, but then recognizing you can break. I mean, we're humans. And so understanding better and better what your calling is. You came to veterinary college thinking one thing. You may, some of you may be leaving veterinary college already having changed your perspective. As you uh, serve our society each day, that question may revisit you. Am I doing what I'm called to do? Am I doing what I'm called to do? And you will know it. You'll know it because it comes from within. You don't need somebody to tell you that. The ones I would be more concerned about amongst you are the ones that are in a box, in a box with a label. You know, I kind of like getting those Amazon boxes, you know, it's kind of an, an it's like Christmas every day or, you know. <laughs> You're in a box with a label. Maybe uh, you thought you were going to be a certain type of veterinarian early on and you've been living in that box all through veterinary school and you're going to walk out of here today in that box. I just simply say, Keep your eyes and ears open and listen to your heart because whatever you're called to do, that's what we need you to be doing, we, the society that you're serving. I really appreciate you all, who you are. Your country needs you. And where would we be without you? Congratulations on all the work that you've done to get here to join in the problem solving that you will be doing from this day forth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Blackwell. I'm sure we will take everything you said to heart. Mr. President. Thank you, Dr. Blackwell. Very inspirational. 
Now we get to the special portion of these exciting ceremonies in which we have the honor to present you with a diploma. How exciting is that? We're excited. Let's do this. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Veterinary Medicine please rise and stand in place. Mr. President, the assembled candidates have met the requirements for graduation and have been recommended by the faculty for the degree of Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. It is my pleasure to present them to you. Thank you, Dean Nelson. Graduates, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you as you individually present yourselves the degree of Doctor of Veterinary Medicine with all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Will our esteemed graduates please come to the stage? Thank you. Dr. Lauren Catherine Achille. Dr. Christina Alba. Dr. Kyla Marie Alvarez. Dr. Rika Marie Tambaung Apolinario. Dr. Shadi Asabadi. Dr. Kaylin Jean Atkinson. Dr. Batul Bani Muhammad. Dr. Gina Marie Battinelli. Dr. Brianna Elaine Borsma. Dr. Saskia Bogman. Dr. Curtis Fintry Boone. Dr. Manon Anne Louise Bourjan.
Dr. Leanna Catherine Boyd. Dr. Victoria Ann Bradford. <laughs> Dr. Madeline Francis Brutus. Dr. Josh Siok Chiang. Dr. Luke Robert Chen. Dr. Kimberly Alexandra McKendry Clark in absentia. In absentia. <laughs> Dr. Jeremy Chiante Coleman. Dr. Ruth Karina Cortez. Dr. Shauna Nicole Sear. Dr. Jessica Dai. Dr. Jesse Ann Dosher. Dr. Matthew Edward Drozd. Dr. Rachel Jacqueline Dubin. Dr. Jessica K. Edmire. Dr. Samantha A. Eisner. Dr. Demetra and Thea Evangelopoulos. Dr. Chelsea Alexis Fischenfeld. Dr. Whitney Lynn Foster. Dr. Alexandra Joyce Jean. Dr. Joseph Andrew Geiger.
Dr. Andy Andronic Gevshinian. Dr. Susanna Loreen Glor. <laughs> Dr. Natalia Isabel Gonzalez. Dr. Kevin Michael Gooch. <laughs> Dr. Sarah Catherine Gottwals. Dr. Tori Lynn Greer. Dr. Shannon P. Gregoire. Dr. Deanna Rose Griloni. <laughs> Dr. Ronald Yoon Ha. Dr. Antoine Hanna. <laughs> Dr. Casey Marie Heinzman. Dr. Jennifer Alicia Hill. Dr. Kimberlyn Michelle Holcomb. Dr. Benjamin John Jankovic. <laughs> Dr. Patrick Harrison Khalife. Dr. Sula Kim. Dr. Melody Koo. Dr. Matthew Constantine Koshevis. <laughs> Dr. Adam Justin Krantz. Dr. Caitlin Jane 
Kraut Kramer. Dr. Robin Isabel Lampron. Dr. Gretchen Mora Legaspi. Dr. Christy Taylor Leslie. Dr. Kershern Lee. Dr. Nicholas Hans Lintzner. Dr. David Dawe Liu. Dr. Joseph Patrick Looney. Dr. Madison Nicole Kamehanani Lop. <laughs> Dr. Tyler Raymond Lovell. Dr. Krista Luisi. Dr. Jesse Tyler Marins. Dr. Logan Nicole McAllister. Dr. Samantha Malero. Dr. Ashley Nicole Miller. <laughs> Dr. Haley Lorraine Moore. Dr. Christopher Leland Morrow. <laughs> Dr. Rachel Claire Morrison. Dr. Tori Lee Nakashima. Dr. Cassie Danell Nikas.
Dr. Selby Grace Nelson. Dr. Tracy Trang Nguyen. Dr. James Patrick Ossoff. Dr. Janet Ramona Padilla. Dr. Alexandra Sara Panatoni. Dr. Sung Hoon Park. Dr. Tiffany Robin Patman. Dr. Eric R James Randall. Dr. Caitlin Elizabeth Rice. Dr. Rachel Alice Rex. Dr. Stephanie Renee Wrigley. Dr. Alondra Michelle Rivera Acevedo. Dr. Rosa Delia Rodriguez. Dr. Kristen Lynn Rothdeutsch. Dr. Elise Michelle Raffoni. Dr. Jessica Nicole Seibel. Dr. Jordan Sinai. Dr. Nicole Marie Spagnolo. Dr. Sarah Danielle Stamp. Dr. Bryn Taylor Taylor.
Dr. Mario Cesar Teyes. Dr. Jacqueline N. Tung. Dr. Anne Marie Underwood. Dr. Paloma Venegas. Dr. Elias Manuel Villarreal. Dr. Andrea Esmeralda Villarreal Alvarez. Dr. Adam Christopher Wiegan. Dr. Andrea Michelle Wilson. Dr. Jacob Robert Wolf. Dr. Katie Lynn Woodruff. Dr. Avak Vahe Sakarian. Dr. Simon Zhu. Dr. Lindsay Allegra Zufal. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2022. I have the pleasure to introduce Elizabeth Klapstein, DVM, MS, the president of the California Veterinary Medical Association, who will administer the veterinarian's oath. I invite the doctors of veterinary medicine in the audience, those on the platform who wish to renew their oath, to stand with Dr. Klapstein and this class. Would the new doctors of veterinary medicine please rise? Doctors. Uh, if you will join me in reciting the veterinarian's oath, it will be my privilege to administer it. Being admitted to the profession of veterinary medicine, I 
I solemnly swear to use my scientific knowledge and skills for the benefit of society through the protection of animal health and welfare, the prevention and relief of animal suffering, the conservation of animal resources, the promotion of public health, and the advancement of medical knowledge. I will practice my profession conscientiously with dignity and in keeping with the principles of veterinary medical ethics. I accept as a lifelong obligation the continual improvement of my professional knowledge and competence. Congratulations, doctors. You may be seated. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Catherine Slaughter Method, DVM MPH, class of 2017, once a veterinary surgeon, now in small animal medicine, in Louisville, Kentucky. We'll bring, she will now bring a welcome from the Western U Alumni Association, Dr. Method. Good morning, graduates. I am Dr. Katherine Slaughter Mayford, DVM, class of 2017, and I currently serve as the co-chair of the Mentor Committee for the Western U Alumni Association. You have worked hard and waited long for this day to come. Your challenging work as professionals is just now beginning and is different than what you have grown accustomed to in the form of final exams, class projects, and clinical experiences. The demanding work that you now face will consist of tough judgment calls, crucial life-altering decisions, and ethical health care battles. I would like nothing more than to stand here and tell you that the rest of your professional journey will be easy because for most of you, that would be inaccurate. I can ensure you, though, that you are well prepared to face the journey and challenges ahead. You are prepared because you are now graduates of Western U. As students, you received much from Western U and the alumni who came before you. The university, through its faculty and staff, not only gave you the chance to fulfill your dreams of becoming a healthcare professional, but they also provided you with the knowledge and skills to excel in your profession. This knowledge was current and comprehensive. It was not just about national board topics, but about healthcare reform and politics. It forced us to learn about and understand other healthcare professions besides our own. The alumni who came before you also played a role in providing financial and volunteer support to the university. And just as important, they established and sustained a reputation of being health caliber professionals. This reputation has opened many doors and opportunities for you. 
And now that you are alumni, it is time for you to carry on this legacy. As you progress through your career, keep in mind that it is now your work as veterinarians that will impact not only your personal reputation, but that of your college, your university, and your profession. Now is also the time for you to start giving back by becoming active alumni of your college and university. Of course, financial support is critical, but it is also important to share your time and experience with current and future students. You can share your knowledge and expertise through guest lectures or host clinical rotations to help develop students' skills. You can also become ambassadors of and advocates for the university within your respective professional communities. It is now your job to be the torchbearers of compassionate health care and scientific excellence which will enhance and extend the quality of life in our communities. Today is a moment that will be imprinted on your mind forever, the crossover from student to professional. The journey ahead will be exciting, nerve wracking, and sometimes scary. Just think about the road you traveled to get to where you are today. You chose Western U because you had faith in their program. Likewise, they chose each of you because they had equal faith in you. Western U has spent the last few years supporting you, providing you with knowledge, and giving you the opportunity to become a veterinarian. As professionals, Western U will continue to support all of you. As alumni, be active and support those that follow you. It is now my pleasure to officially welcome you as alumni of Western University of Health Sciences. Will the members of the class of 2022 please rise? To signify your accomplishments and your change in status from students to alumni, please move your tassel from the right side of your cap to the left, placing it over your heart. Congratulations and welcome to the Western U Alumni Association. Speech back. Okay. You may be seated. One glorious spring morning, long, long, long time ago, when I was in a senior in vet school, I was on my senior rotation in small animal medicine. And a family came in, a mother, three children, and a golden retriever, and a basket. And they brought him into the exam room, and they opened the basket, and there were nine golden retriever puppies in the basket. And I was to do a wellness check and vaccinations, etc. So I took out the first puppy, put it on the table, checked it out, gave it his shots, then put it on the floor. So I got the second puppy, and while I was doing that, one of the three children took the basket, put it on the floor, dumped all the puppies on the floor. And I suddenly realized I was going to have a problem keeping up with which ones I had vaccinated and which ones I hadn't. I also realized I was going to have a problem with the children because they were just playing with the puppies that I couldn't get them away from him. Needless to say, I finally made it through with the help of the mother 
And I thought it was just going to be, I thought this was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. And so as they, I escorted them out and gave the children suckers and stuff, another, uh, a, a teenager came in with another basket. And I'm just excited. I've got to, I get to do this all over again. And he puts the basket on the, on the exam table, and I put my hand in the basket, and a 12-foot boa constrictor <laughs> wraps around my arm. And as the head goes around my neck, I just look at the owner and say, get it off. <laughs> now, after they unwrapped the boa constrictor from around my neck, I then said, I'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> and I stepped out. I don't essentially turn colors. The closest I can say is if I had looked in the mirror, I might have been ashen. But I got myself together, went back in, and dealt with the boa constrictor. But that was the day that I knew I had made the right choice. Not because of the snake, mind you, I had a few doubts. But that was the day I knew that I had made the right choice to become a veterinarian. Now I know your time in Western U wasn't exactly what you experienced. Believe me, we were just as surprised as you were. But are you going to define yourself by the challenges we encountered over the past two years? Or are you going to define yourself by the triumphs over those challenges? I just told you about the best day of my time as a veterinary student. What was yours? Remember it. Define it. File it away for the next challenge. Use it to steal yourself when needed in the future. Needless to say, I am not a fan of the catastrophic doom and gloom pundits. It is time to stop playing the role of the pretender. It is time that you openly acknowledge that you are here because of your intellect and stop dumbing down to fit in. It is time that you step up and accept your responsibility that comes with possessing the talent, the skills that you've acquired to be a doctor of veterinary medicine. This is the time to start contributing and repaying the investment that has been made in your training. You are rejoining society with acquired skills and knowledge that place you at its pinnacle. You are blessed with youth, talent, skills, and determination. I want you to care, not just about yourselves, but about your profession, the students behind you, that little baby, <laughs> your colleagues, your family's friends, and the people you don't know. If we are to avoid the circumstances you had to suffer when you began this trek, you will have to apply your unique talents to the problems. These problems will be solved with intellect, a commodity that you seem to have more than your fair share. Your potential is inextricably related to your potential as a person. A true professional cannot separate his or her professional and personal lives, for they borrow from each other. They depend on each other. They nourish each other. If you want to be a good veterinarian, 
you must first be a good person. I hope your future choices are guided by a desire to get it right rather than just being right. That you are more concerned in the interest of your patients and clients on an individual basis than your bottom line. That you will willingly choose to contribute to the enduring good instead of designing band-aids and quick fixes. That you understand the actionable chasm between ethical decisions and legal or technical decisions and that you choose to make more decisions on the basis of your ethics than out of concern for legal technicalities when the two conflict. Remember those that have helped you along the way. Acknowledge them. Pay them back by reaching back and paying it forward. Do not forget us, your faculty, for we have a vested interest in you. And so, to the parents, spouses, partners, loved ones, friends, and anyone else who cares for these gifted individuals, the faculty of the College of Veterinary Medicine returns your treasure to you, better trained, a little wiser, more knowledgeable, and definitely a little older. We return them happily with a little sadness, but we will retain fond memories of their presence and will always regret the imposed absence we had to endure. To the class of 2022, as the honored designee of the veterinary profession and this faculty, I wish you future health, success in your endeavors, and I pray you find satisfaction in your choices. I advise that you remember five rules to keep you happy. Number one, fear your heart from hatred. Free your heart from hatred. Hatred is just wasted energy. Free your mind from worries. Focus on solving the problem. Live simply. Give more. Expect less. On behalf of veterinarians everywhere, and particularly the faculty of Western University College of Veterinary Medicine, welcome to the veterinary profession. Thank you, Dean. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the graduates of 2022. such a remarkable event this has been. Congratulations again to each of you. I confess I am deeply moved as I see so many of your family members and loved ones and friends gathering here today to support you. All the cheers. During the presidential search process for me, one hugely appealing Western U characteristic was the tremendous sense of community. Founding President Phil Pomerantz and the founding comp Physicians created a great sense of welcome, warmth, and family four decades ago that lives on today. A primary focus for me as your third president is to nurture that wonderful feeling of warmth, inclusivity, and in so doing, convey a sense of extended family to everyone at Western U. Our Oregon and California campuses are more than just an elite graduate college of higher education, but a second home in which all are treated with empathy, compassion, care accorded to a family member. 
And that sense of family must endure as we grow and as we build upon the coveted legacy. I definitely ascribe to the philosophy that life is a team effort, much more so than an individual effort. Think of the extraordinary individual efforts and sacrifice that each and every one of you has endured to arrive at this point. Sleep deprivation, the missed parties and movies, and yet you have never been alone. We each have those special someones who we can count on and who can count on us in challenging times. We're a guiding light for someone, a steadying hand when they stumble, a keeper of confidence in good times and bad, and someone may be all those things for us as well. A team effort indeed. And we're blessed to be surrounded by people who care for us, whose hands applaud as they have today to your success, and whose shoulders will comfort us in difficult times and those who have made sacrifices for us to ensure our success. Your years of study have included these highs and lows, and your family, your loved ones, your friends, those who raised you and those who have supported your choice for this university have rode those highs and lows with you. They're your team. Let's give credit to those loved ones today. I ask that your teams, whether husband, wives, children, the significant others, friends, parents, grandparents, or special friends here today, please rise. Rise and be acknowledged. Rise and let us and these special graduates today, all of us, show our sincere appreciation and gratitude for what you have done this day. Thank you. You are, are now our new ambassadors and forever a, mo a member of Western U family. You are the bright beacon of light that represents the future. All of you proudly carry now the Western U flag of humanism and compassion care in your endeavors. Remember how I mentioned Rosie and her mother? I even mentioned Guido. But what I didn't tell you is that at the primate colony in Sepulveda, we were doing, I was doing C-sections for the African green monkeys because they had a difficult time with delivery of their babies. The anxiety on their faces, I get choked up thinking about it. And that's the gift you have to comfort and give them the care as an example. That is a, just a glimpse of how I perceive your unique skill set to be applied. You now possess the skill set to make a profound and meaningful difference in the world before you. And also, positively impact the healthcare profession of our communities globally. In essence, you have accepted a higher calling, the care of the patient. No value can be placed on your capacity and willingness to care and serve your patients. In the words of Francis Assisi, when you leave this earth, you can take nothing that you have received, but only what you have given a full heart enriched by honest service, love, sacrifice, and courage. A hearty congratulations to our special class of 2022. Congratulations. God bless you all, Godspeed. And with this, I declare these commencement exercises closed. Distinguished guests, this concludes our commencement ceremony. For those who are able, please stand and remain at your seat until the faculty and graduates have exited the lobby. For the safety of all, it is essential the aisles are kept clear during the recessional. Commencement assistants will inform you when it is clear for you to exit the auditorium. <laughs>